All right, so we are back, and um, we're getting into our Darius Crook seg segment of this evening. Uh, tonight, we have two separate topics uh, related to uh, the crook, or the cook, that we know as Darius Crooks. And um, so the one story that uh, has been trending you know, in his drama land in the Scampire for, for what going on over a little over a week now is the story regarding Darius Crooks and uh, a restaurant worker named Juanito, who Darius Crooks has been harassing and attacking, excuse me, yeah, harassing and attacking for uh, a, a couple days. Well, really over a week now. And um, so I'm just going to give you a little backstory. So Darius Crooks is, you know, he always has a grift. And so he goes from one grift to the next. You know, he's had the, the um, you know, the cookware line, the cupcake gallery, the the food, the fresh to fresh go food delivery scam and, and uh, Groupon scam and and. Uh, the cookbook scam and the cookware scam and the adult toy scam. That's one of the new ones. So one of the other grifts is his, he's now a food reviewer. Uh, so he goes to restaurants across the country when he's uh, traveling for his dining with diarrhea events. And what he does is uh, stuff himself full of uh, a bunch of food because um, he thinks that he can just keep having these gastric bypass surgeries and it's going to be the resolve when it's really a mental issue. Uh, so there's that. You know, eventually the doctors are going to have to refuse you or nature will. But anyway, um, what he's been doing is grifting and copying off of uh, Keith Lee, who is a TikToker. And he's a black TikToker who is very humble. He's uh, taken off and gone viral. And he goes across the country and he reviews uh, black owned restaurants and he's been very successful at it. So like everything else, Darius sees someone being successful at something. And he's like, oh, there's a new grift I should try. Like you notice he's starting a podcast. Y'all seen him with this mic? <laughs> he has his mic now in front of him. But remember, he was saying I was just a uh, gossip blogger. And then he started being a gossip blogger because he realized that there's actually a career over here. <laughs> That's what he does, though. That's what he does. He he's, has no originality. But anyway, so what he does is he's been going to these various black owned restaurants as he's uh, doing his dining with diarrhea events across the country. And um, in this one particular instance, he, he shows up at uh, Oak I keep wanting to call it Oak City, but it's City uh, Fish and Tri Chips in Raleigh, North Carolina. Now, usually when someone is a food reviewer, you know, they communicate with the owner. They let them know I'm coming. They kind of set up things, et cetera. Darius just pops up and puts a camera in people's faces and calls him, you know, because you're supposed to be so happy that he's graced you with his, um, you know, predatory uh, appearance. And so this is the incident that occurred. And then I'll, I'll take you through the rest of the timeline. Well, let me just say this. So this turned into from Darius supposedly going here to promote black business. Turned into Darius um, dragging this uh, worker, the cashier, and eventually getting him fired and then being disparaging about the business as, as a whole and getting his D hags to a to um, drag the business and harass the business itself, as well as uh, Juanito, who um, was the cashier who, uh, or worker, I don't know, he was doing more than being just cashier, but uh, the worker who, who worked there. So anyway, I'm going to take you through the timeline. Now I'm doing a deep dive on this, and this is what I've been working on. This is going to be real good. It's going to be even more than this. But uh, I just wanted to go and give y'all get y'all a little teaser. So this is Darius. First time walking up, he has communicated with no one. He's now uh, in the face of Juanito, and here we go. Go to yours. Yeah. So I am going to have. What's the Oak City basket? What's that? Uh, what happens if I don't like oysters? If I get the Oak City basket. Can we substitute with something else? Uh, I don't 
substitute. You don't think you're supposed to substitute? Yeah, it's like my third day. Your third day, gotcha. He seems like he knows a little more. Yes, Can we ask him? Yes, yeah, ask him, see what he's saying. He actually going to try to change the homework. We got before. You think anybody back there would know? They knew too? So everybody knew around here. All right, let's do this. It's probably best to. So he shows up with a camera in people's faces. The Juanito um, can't answer these kind of specific questions because he's like, ooh, this is my third day. I don't know. And the manager has just walked away, which to me, that's an issue in and of itself. If you're training, you're a manager and you see someone walking up with a camera and this dude is already asking questions that you're having to answer as you're walking away might mean you want to hold, you know, hold back a little bit and, and hold tight and see if you might need to assist your new worker with that. But that, that that's training on a whole nother level. That's, that's my way of managing. Everybody don't manage like that. But anyway, um, Darius has even his stance and stuff. And he's, he's had people, in the comments saying, you know, his presence and just the way that he was acting was, uh, you know, condescending. And Juanito is saying it's his third day. And then Darius repeating to the camera, uh, it's his third day. Kind of, you know, arrogant. And this is why you would call ahead and let them know, hey, you know, I'm a, a, a social media influencer, predator, aka predator that has been scamming uh, for a little over a decade, my new grift is uh, coming out and reviewing Black-owned restaurants because I could never run a successful one myself. So I'm looking for ways that I can steal ideas from you and potentially maybe start this grift again. And so I just wanted to give you a heads up that um, I'm going to be in your town on this day because I do these Dining with Diarrhea events across the country uh, with my DHAGs. Um, I have a cult following they act like cult members, and um, I indoctrinate them by playing church every night with my taco meat chest. And um, many of them are in love with me, uh, although I am a, a, a sissy because I call myself a sissy and I've called myself. Um, well, he hasn't called himself a stunt queen. I call him a stunt queen. But, you know, he, he probably says that in the conversation, too. And Lavelle, who was a loyal friend of mine who, um, you know, I scammed him like I scam, you know, hundreds of people in Chicago you know, with my Fresco scam and my uh, Cupcake Gallery in Investor scam and uh, the friend's building who I lived in. And then I lied, told him I had paid the rent and left it in my bedroom um, because I was trying to make him think my roommate stole it. But it's really that I didn't leave the money. But at that time, that friend didn't know I was uh, a predator and a liar. But now he kind of knows that. But anyway, that's that's off the subject. But anyway, so I'm going to be in your town. So just kind of giving you a heads up. So, you know, if you want to be there, Ask some questions or whatever, whatever, you know, because my coat, they going to do whatever I say. My D-hags, because many of them are in love with me, although I'm a sissy. Again, I'm calling, you know, he calls himself a sissy. So you, you can't out-sissy a sissy. He's saying he's the sissiest of the sissies. So he he should let them know. I have a bunch of D-hags. Many of them are lonely, and they think they can convert me, although I'm a bottom. He says this now. These are not my words. These are his words. He says in his um, jacked profile that he is a bottom and all the tops to the front. And then he has the naked picture with his booty out. Um, we have that. We ain't putting all that on YouTube, but maybe one day on Patreon. Y'all join the Patreon. We might get a little, a little gritty over there. But anyway, okay. So he should do those sort of things. He should introduce himself and who he truly is, the predator, and say, you know, just letting you know I'm a predator. And so... You know, if you want to be around for my predatory practices, this would be a good idea for, you know, um, just to give you a heads up so that you don't have brand new employees at the front counter who I'm harassing and giving a hard time to uh, because I'm a person who has no heart, no morals um, and no compassion. And I act like I've always lived in great, uh, greatness and been, you know, a multimillionaire. And I forget that I filed three bankruptcies and have been evicted from at least three apartments that Lavelle knows of. Actually, no, I'm sorry, four. And then so he's not saying none of that. He's not treating Juanito like, hey, Juanito, I understand the position you're in, man. You know, there was a time where I wasn't making that much money and I couldn't pay my bills. I ain't had no car, man. Vail used to drive me around. He don't remember none of that, though. 
All right, so let's go. So I just wanted to catch y'all up to where we're at right here. Yeah. Get the Oak City basket. So I'm going to do the Oak City basket. Ask them to hold the um, oysters for me, please. All right, you want a large or a small? Uh, Oak City basket. It comes... Doesn't it just come one size or does it come one size? No, it comes uh, the large or the small. Okay, if I'm getting everything, then let's do a small. How about I do that? All right. Uh... Y'all hear that snotting? Get that taken care of, man. You're a millionaire. Get that damn thing. Get that drained out. Third day. So you hear him. I'm, I'm rewinding a little bit. So the condescending behavior of now this is the second time he's repeating third day. So it's his fault that he just started a new job and he doesn't know every effing thing about the menu and, and how to deal with dis difficult customers yet. This is his fault. So you want to insult him but act like, well, huh? Well, I was just, I was so kind. I was so, you were so condescending. And we're not idiots. He's not an idiot. He knows that you're being a, 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 a suck queen, a sissy. You, you say you're a sissy. You're being a sissy. And he saw that. Uh, it's his third day. Uh, oh, remember, thank you for that. Who, who just said that? Um, I'm sorry, the chat moving so fast now. Um, Oh, that's uh, Jules808. Uh, uh, yes. Um, asking you shall receive. Remember, where's where's Vail? Where's the expose? Here you go. Yeah, I do, actually. Maybe uh, calamari could be a good idea. If you could do that, would be great. So with the basket, do I get the, uh, do you know if I get the uh, hush puppies too or no? Uh, yes, yeah, hush puppies do come with it. Okay, hush puppies come with it. It's a whole food hall. Actually, they don't. They don't. don't. That's fine. No, 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 that's fine. So, now I'll do that. I'll do an order of the hush puppies. And it doesn't seem like this comes with the lobster tail. Oh, no, no. no. So, why don't I do a small on the lobster tail? And just as a person who knows this stunt queen, uh, has known the stunt queen personally, you know, for a, a decade or so. Uh, I know the tone and everything. It's very condescending. Like, it's not his natural tone. It's not his, uh, you know, normal way of interacting. It's a very um, um, superior tone that he's using in this situation. And he's showboating uh, on the camera because he knows that he's recording this uh, particular video as content for the D-Hags, for the cult. And so he's showing out a little bit for them, too. This is all within that tone. So for those of you who may not really be able to read through it like that. And that covers every. What kind of fish is it? Do we know? Whiting. Whiting. OK, so then that comes with everything. The fries, the seasoned fries come with that? Yes, right. OK, so then that's it. That and then I'll take what drinks do you have? Uh, we don't have drinks. You don't have drinks today. OK, well, then I'll take that to go. Uh, um, what's the name for the order? Uh, Darius, D-A-R-I-U-S. Okay, I'm going to fast forward a little bit of this. So what I will say, because I like to be fair. I am. I'm fair. Like, I'm being fair because he is a stunt queen. He is a predator. He is a sissy. So I'm not going to say anything that's not true. Um, I'm only going to speak facts to the situation. And so in, in saying that, this was not the best service. But also, you have to adjust your expectations because of the fact Juanito was very honest and saying, hey, this is my third day. I've been places and dealt with people who were brand new and they didn't even tell you they were new. And when you find out later, maybe because you have to get help from someone else or a manager or something and you find out they were new, it's like, oh, well, had I known you were new, I wouldn't <laughs> even kept it going this long or whatever. I would have asked for some other whatever. And so Juanito is honest enough to let him know, which us normal you know, people who have had healthy uh, childhoods, et cetera, and know how to interact with people on a proper level and aren't sociopath, we would adjust our interaction with that person so that we're not harming them or making it a worse interaction for them and understanding that this is a learning, now a learning experience for them. And so we're going to, you know, make it 
pleasurable as much as possible while getting the service, you know, that we desire. Darius could have held back and said, oh, that was your manager who just walked away. Well, you know, I'm doing this on camera for my D hags and, you know, they think everything I do is great and I can do no wrong. And so how about I just uh, hold back to the manager comes back so that we can kind of make sure this flows uh, easy. Cause I am also reviewing a black owned a uh, restaurant and I'm here because I care about black owned businesses. And so of course I would want a black owned operation to be in the best light in front of my millions of um, burner bot accounts and the, you know, few hundred D hags that I have. So, but no, that's not what, you know, he does. He's a sociopath and a sissy and a stunt queen. All right. I forgot this was the part I wanted to pass. I'm like, what kind of editing y'all doing? Who the hell want to see you ringing, your, <laughs> like paying with your phone? You're doing too much. So in this part here, he's, well, I'll play it because some of you haven't seen this at all. What time should I come back? Uh, I don't know, five, ten minutes. Five or ten minutes. All right, cool. We won't go too far. Two. You out of them? Yes, sir. Okay. So what happens at this point is uh, Darius is now picking up his order. Uh, Juanito is then telling him, oh, man, I didn't know we ran out of lobster tails. And so this is the interaction that's happening from that. Even after I paid for it? Yeah, um, I guess. Even after I paid for it? Uh, you paying for it or not? If we ran out, we ran out. <laughs> like, But they ended up being able to find it. It was, you know, they. I think some other manager, because they had multiple locations, was gonna bring some over or whatever, but I'll continue. Yes, it's good to have phone with you, man. All right. Yeah, um, I guess it's good. You out of them? Yes, sir. Okay. Even after I paid for it? Yeah, um, I guess it's good to have phone with you, man. All right. Sorry about that. So the guy, other guy standing there, um, with the on the phone, is the manager. Okay. I know I had them this morning when I set up. Like, I... And you can see in Juanito's demeanor, like he's like, "Man, I messed up." Like, I'm, I'm and I'm sorry. Like, you, his demeanor is very um, apologetic. He, there's no aggression in his tone, etc. And you know, yeah, it's okay. So, I want to, whatever, everything, whatever you got. You got a tray to put it on so I can carry it over? Can you get one? How we supposed to carry? She had a light right here around the corner. Okay. Yeah, set me up. Come on, man. Get, do me right. I'm sorry. Set me up, man. Do me right. This is why you call ahead. This is why you arrange this sort of situation so you don't have this. And then you film this. And, okay, you filmed it. Fine. But then you you put this out on social media, seeing that it's chaotic, and you're supposedly promoting black businesses. Do you think this makes uh, City Fish and Chips look good? You got to do you right. Right. You look like a number one customer. I'll do all right. Jesus, that's not. I do, and I do only black owned places too. FYI. So it looks like uh, the manager is on the phone with uh, the owner or, you know, the person in charge who happens to have more lobster tails on the way and they're not far away. Well, I guess a black run. So you got the trade for you as well? Alright. I'm gonna meet you out there. Bro. Bro, those in the back. What? Yeah. Oh, I ain't gonna do that. Yeah. yeah, they in the back. And you hear Juanito now that he he's you know went 
uh, because this is in a food hall. So this is not like only the um, fish and chip restaurant. This is a food hall with multiple uh, restaurants. So it's almost like being at the food court at a mall. That's the kind of situation this is. So it's like tons of restaurants in there. Uh, so Juanito has gone over to where a group of trays are, um, you know, because Darius is too important to go grab his own tra tray um, for one <laughs> container of food. <laughs> Nothing else. <laughs> Just one container of food. So, so, huh? Well, I wanted pack to go. Um, I'm going to start. So you got a bag. I can come back and get a bag yeah, or tray. Yeah. What else am I missing from this particular order? That's it. So this is the whole thing. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna run and chill out on the side. I'll right, come back for the lobster tails in a second, or right. when they, you know, when they're ready. So, and the hush puppies are here too. Yeah, everything you can in there. Yeah, your hush puppies. Got it. Okay, cool. I will be back for the lobster. All right, so I don't have everything on purpose. I don't have everything as a part of, you know, this uh, this uh, presentation here because um, I'm going to do a deep dive video. I literally, ha it's coming together. It's just, it was going to take me a couple more days. And I was like, let me, let me give y'all a little something. So um, I'm seeing comments. I'm, I'm, let me get through the story. Then I'm, I'm, I'm starring some comments here too. Um so after this happens, um, there's another clip of Darius. So not only did he get that, but he went to the place next door. <laughs> next door, he got an empanada. Then he went to uh, a, a place down further and got a, some kind of grilled cheese. Then he uh, ended up getting uh, rolled ice cream as well. Life of a bari bariatric patient. <laughs> In what world? So anyway, Darius goes to sit down. He starts to film his food review um, and he's talking about it. And then Juanito ends up coming over with the fried lobster tail. And then Darius does his review of that. The review of the food did not, would not make a person be running to try to go to uh, city fish and ships. Uh, so I would just recommend that people bar him from coming <laughs> to review their they restaurants. <laughs> If you're smart, because <laughs> if he do anything crazy like what has happened, your restaurant gets doxxed and harassed by his coat, the hags. On top of that, your employees potentially will be harmed by them, which is what we saw happen. So Darius does that. Then Darius goes on his Instagram live afterwards. Uh, he's in the car. He's talking about the experience, like everything is content for him. So because the food is not content and like that's the thing that is not the content. Um, the real grift is the drama. So he's talking about the situation. Somehow Juanito gets uh, wind of it because, you know, people know people who know people. Juanito gets wind of it and then ends up coming on Darius's page and then he makes a comment now what i'm not sure of and some of you may be able to help me, i'm not sure who's here if any of the exposing darius crooks people here and twitter or lipstick alley all that good stuff but anyway i'm not sure of like um what platforms or the, the exact timeline but um juanito ends up commenting this looks like it was under darius crooks um facebook page and he says juanito uh comments and says I knew you looked familiar. Let me see what you think. And then uh, one of, I think this is a, a hag. Yeah, one of the hags, the D hag says, you're a little too late. You'll hear loud and clear what he thinks. Ha 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 ha, laughing emojis. So this is where the hagation starts. This is where they start to, they're flying monkeys. So, and for those of you, cause I know people get sensitive about the word monkey when referring well, black people use the word monkey and all of that. I'm not saying in the sense of black people are monkeys. No, the hags are flying monkeys, as in the Wizard of Oz, the Wicked Witch of the East or West or whatever. She had the flying monkeys and she would send them out to go attack people for. Her. And so these are flying monkeys, the D-hags. 
So um, Darius then says, because now Heather Radcliffe has now gotten the attention because they're all, you know, they they do this stuff to get um, approval. These, this is the, where the parasocial relationship starts to t- uh, tap in because he can give an F about them. But they like, look at me, look at me. I'm defending you. Look at me, look at me. I'm harassing for you. And so uh, Darius sees it, of course. And then he says uh, he's agreeing. Heather Radcliffe, right. Because now he backpedaling and pussy popping. So Darius has drug him and Juanito has commented. And now Darius has been ignited to be the you know the sissy and the stunt queen and so now he's in action that that switch has been flipped so then again i'm not sure of this this timeline part this is the stuff i'm trying to straighten out for our video but <laughs> at a point juanito's like okay all bets are off now i've been nice to yo <laughs> yeah your ass up in this restaurant while you sat there with your uh, your arrogant ass and um, and acted like you were so important, like a king had walked into the building. And uh, so all, all bets were off. Juanito was probably at home at this point. And he's like, uh, Darius Crooks, let's add me to the live next time, Miss Mamas. <laughs> While you trying to make it seem like uh, me and my co-workers stealing ish and so on. So this comment from Juanito is based on Darius Crooks saying when he was on his uh, Instagram live with his D-hags, he was telling them about the, the them not them running out of lobster tails, uh, the restaurant running out of lobster tails. And what he insinuates is that, oh yeah, and they probably ran out of it because you know, I own the restaurant and them, uh, them lobster and seafood be walking out the door. So he was insinuating that the reason why that restaurant ran out is because their employees were thieves. You don't know these people. And then you lie on your ex-employees too. That's a whole nother. We're going to talk about that one day. I can't, because if I started, just we'd be all over the place. So Tangle Web, this um, stunt queen weaves. So we got to stay on topic. But anyway, so he was insinuating that Juanito and his co-workers, his colleagues, not that they, you know, the inventory was low and that they sold lobster tails, and, and other customers had already taken them, but that no, the employees have packed them in their trunks of their cars now. Horrible. But you you supporting black businesses. Okay. Says, um, when Nito goes on to say, like you don't have, <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all, it's been a minute since I've read this. <laughs> it caught me off guard. I'm chuckling. Says, like you don't have them lawsuits to clear up. Reviews of your own personal catering plates. That's the size of our paper <laughs> paper plate trays. I mean, come on now, chocolate drop, and get your good old S- SSA Dementia Award fans off my goddamn page, please. <laughs> if they if they demeanor anything like yours, I don't need that energy. Yeah, and their energy is just like his. <laughs> birds of a feather um so someone comments i swear this ish just be happening to you everywhere you go lol so they're talking to darius so this is another hag and i think i'm taking y'all let me know in the comments how you take it but i take the tone as they're encouraging it kind of like oh you so great that everyone hates on you and just stuff be happening you find yourself in these situations because everyone else is so horrible and you're so perfect and it's so hard for you to live in a perfect for you to be perfect in a horrible world with a bunch of people who are jealous and into uh, wanting your money like we do because we think everyone is as horrible as we are you know all of that so anyway Juanito then goes on to say so (laughs) because Juanito wasn't done he says, so Darius Cooks, <laughs> big bacon, back, rusty neck, sleuth footed, knock kneed, <laughs> black mark, round eyes, looking like a goddamn raccoon, diabetes, SSA, ankles, <laughs> got some nerve to feel a way and go on Instagram live talking about what do old me. But once again, Juanito pops up, uh, pops uh, us, she changed the sub. Oh, once again, Juanito pops up and she changes the subject. Okay, sissy. <laughs> I can say that, right? I mean, 
that's what you refer to yourself as. Am I correct, madam? I mean, because if I'm wrong, uh, I'm going to apologize. <laughs> he does call himself a sis. He, I'm looking for my clip. I got it somewhere. And I was like, oh, this weekend, I just couldn't. I, I didn't, you know, I ain't spent hours looking for it, but I haven't run into it yet. But I have clips of him saying, you can't have sissy a sissy. Okay. <laughs> you call yourself a sissy. All right. <laughs> I can't wait till I go at, start adding it in our clips. <laughs> Say it again for me, like more recently, so somebody can grab it. Anybody out there, y'all, the screen recorders out there who watch them lives, I need that. Can't now sissy a sissy. Or even just him saying sissy, calling himself sissy. I'll work it out. Just send it. Put it on Twitter or whatever. I, I grab it. Anyway, um, so we have that. So now, full force. This is how Darius Crooks works. When it comes to these situations, you cannot stand up against him. He is supposed to be the queen, the stunt queen. No one, everyone must bow to the stunt queen. And so because Juanito is a person who is not a public figure and doesn't have a platform, Darius used that as ammunition to be able to crush him. So he sends the flying monkeys out and they all on Juanito's page and they digging up ish. And they call in his employer and how you got somebody working for you that's like that. And I'm going to make sure nobody else come there and all of that. They do all that. And so in the meanwhile, Darius is like, time to rinse and repeat my normal scam, my Ponzi scheme, which is now I'm about to turn this into a profitable um, beef. He calls them beef, but it's his stunt queen antics. So what he then does is create a discount code. This is the thing that trips me out, but I'm going to finish first. So he creates a discount code and he creates a T-shirt. You watch this. This is a wash and repeat scam. He does this every time. He's done it with Sonny Anderson. He's done it with the Kitchenista. He's done it with um, Mel Ford. And, and it's a list that goes, uh, Bridget, there's a, a regular, it was a regular customer who he scammed. And then her brother stood up for him. Her, well, she was standing up for herself and then her brother came out, but uh, her name was Bridget. And so he created a T-shirt line, don't be a Bridget. So this is his thing. And so then these D-hags, flying monkeys, they like, what should we do, master? What should we do, stunt queen master? And so he's like, ah. And, and then they like, oh, we need a discount code because we're going to make them mad because we're going to spend our money on you. <laughs> What? <laughs> you are <laughs> you got some idiots. <laughs> that shit is funny. <laughs> so anyway, same thing here. Watch and repeat. He creates a t-shirt line because he was called, and again, this is these are snippets. It's not everything. Because in one of the comments, um, Juanito called him queenish, because he's a stuck queen. And uh, so Darius Crooks creates a queenish and a kingish t-shirt. Well, all he did was like, he goes on his t-shirt site and type in that and create a little quick little uh, Photoshop logo. And he put it on these, uh, these t-shirts. I mean, these sweatshirts, t-shirts or whatever. And then he puts out a post and says, introducing the new Juanito line of tees and hoodies. Grab a queenish or kingish tee or hoodie. Be sure to use discount code. And I think the discount code was uh, queenish. So, now they bind it up, <laughs> not us. <laughs> we supposed to be the ones being punished, right? Like us who are speaking out about him should be the ones who are punished. Why are they being punished? Because they spending money. What? <laughs> okay. <laughs> if it works for y'all, okay. So they spend money. And then the next piece of this, the next part of the scam is then Darius supply and demand. So then what he does is create... um buzz around it so now it's the drama so it's getting attention and then he is making some profit but then he inflates what's really happening so that more of the d-hags who believe every word that this scammer and po uh, ponzi schemer and predator say they're believing the hype it's all created marketing it's smoke and mirrors they believe it and they're like oh i want one too i want one too because i've seen five people post that they got it and they just ordered it out of the five probably three to four of them are his burner accounts. That's 
you can program them to do that. We're going to talk about that one day. I'm going to break all that down for y'all. So they thinking four of these hags then bought, four or five of these hags then bought it, might have been one, if that. Might have been none. And he <laughs> he was posting that under different accounts. They call bot farms. Look them up. I actually posted it on our um, on our Facebook page and uh, our VIP group, too, explaining it. It's the definition of bot farms. You can buy them. I can have it. If I wanted a million followers, well, on paper, <laughs> if I wanted y'all to be like, ooh, Vale got a million followers, I could buy them. I could do that. The difference is you'll, you'll know the difference that I don't really have that many, as many as that, based on my engagement. If you you see me all of a sudden with a million followers, and you'll never see that because I ain't doing that bullshit. But if you ever saw me with a million followers and you still see me with um, 200 people in our, in our live streams, that ish ain't true. <laughs> It's not true. That means I bought the rest of them. They're not real people. That's what. That's how you know that Darius has bought many of his followers because his engagement is like mine for the most part, except for when. Well, no shit. Even when he has drama, it's like mine. It's at my level. It shouldn't be. Your 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 platform is like almost a hundred times bigger on paper than mine. That's why you started trying to be a pod a, a blogger, a gossip blogger, because you saw that my engagement was higher than yours. You supposed to be making more money than well, you making more from your scamming for sure. You ain't making more on your platforms than well, I ain't gonna say that. You ain't making more on your YouTube <laughs> than me because your views are in the same <laughs> realm as mine. <laughs> anyway, but they don't know all this. They not educated. They ain't got common sense either. And they ain't got critical thinking skills. That's a whole nother story. Um. Anyway, so back to this. So now he has, you know, he's building up the buzz. We're gonna get them. Spend money on me. <laughs> make me make me appear richer. What? <laughs> so then he starts doing these sort of posts. This is rinse and repeat. I'll show y'all. I'm gonna show y'all the pattern because I got all these documented. You know, just the pattern. He's supposed to be some great marketing genius. Damn, uh, grift ain't changed in ten years. <laughs> what? <laughs> Same stuff. They ain't paying attention to the patterns, but we are. So anyway, he posts here, it says, almost 100K in 12 hours. Never go back and forth with me on social media. I'll use your name to get a bag. Let's play a game. Let's say Juanito makes $18 an hour to take orders. I make 100K. He'd need to work 5,555 hours at 40 hours a week. That's 138.88 weeks or roughly 2.67 years, imagine the lesson he could have learned by shutting the F up. Oh, well, I'm always game to make an extra 100K. If you need me, I'll be helping the team pack orders. So, um, yeah, <laughs> I can't wait to get to y'all comments. So this is the great, oh, this is what somebody pointed out. <laughs> I, I love, oh, I so love the people in the coalition. So this is what somebody pointed out. And this screenshot is really small. I don't know how well y'all can see it. But y'all see this graph of the day that the drama started and he did the sales and it just did this big, long graph bar. But look at before. <laughs> this shit is a flat line. It's dead. <laughs> Ain't no heartbeat. Ain't no heartbeat in themselves <laughs> until the drama. Which again tells us and shows us, I mean, I don't make this ish up, tells us and shows us that your brand is ish and is not based on your cooking because you're cooking every day and you're on live every single day, multiple times a day. That ain't got this graph going up and down. The only time it moves is when there's drama, which is why you're a stunt queen, why you always creating drama. The other piece that people have pointed out, um, because you see it here, like, and then you see it taper off. You see it shoot up uh, the day of the drama. Well, I guess that maybe the drama started late at night or whatever. So that that full day, it shoots up and then it drops immediately. And I'm sure if we really, really watched it, if he was to give us, you know, more of these uh, fake. Well, for one part of these are probably fake, <clears throat> fake um, screenshots. The other pieces he claims he can't create these. Um, but I have a video <laughs> there on YouTube. You can really Google it. How to fake Shopify um, numbers. <laughs> I was going to do a video months ago about it and uh, just got got sidetracked with a bunch of other stuff going on. But uh, where where he literally says, 
Yeah, and they saying I'm faking these numbers. I, I ain't no way that you can't fake these numbers. I wouldn't even know how to do it. And then I was gonna have a <laughs> just throw in a clip of the instructions. <laughs> I'm still gonna do it. <laughs> Like, because you know how to do it. That's why I was throwing, throw, like, this is how he does it. <laughs> he claims it can't be done. This is how you're doing it. <laughs> they don't use any level of, you know, critical thinking or common sense. Like, th this stuff is Googleable. You can just Google it. Anyway, I'm going to have to move faster because we had two hours, over two hours already. And this, I know I got y'all up late on the night and I'm clowning. My Aries is in full, <laughs> full of more. And I could, I could keep going, but I ain't going to, I ain't going to hold y'all like that. Um, okay. So we did the t shirt. Well, I'm sorry. He did the T-shirt scam and then or grift. I should call it a grift because some people now is already people. There's already one person I saw today saying they ain't got their T-shirt yet. But the truth is with the T-shirts, he well, you know what? I don't know now with the t no, I don't. He's not doing those T-shirts. Those are drop ship from like a, a different company like I, I have. We have merch, too. I don't really advertise because I need to update some stuff. But um, with the um, yeah, with that is drop shipping. So. If y'all order my mugs, my notebooks, my my I almost wore my uh, sweatshirt today, my hoodies and all of that. I'm not here packing no damn hoodies. I'm not here stamping my logo <laughs> like it's done. It's done somewhere. I don't even know where I think in California. Yeah, it's in California. And then they ship it to y'all. So um, but and so people I'll hear people saying like, I always get my T-shirts and stuff. Yeah, because he ain't got nothing to do with that. <laughs> he ain't got nothing to do with that. But anyway, so you got that that part of the, the grift. Then he asked, now this is wash and repeat. This ain't new. Did this with uh, the kitchenista as well. When he, um, yeah, ran that promo um, using her name. So then he creates a master class because he gets them all riled up on the on the Instagram. And, oh, my God, bro, you is a you a genius. You a marketing genius. Uh, they, I don't know why they keep messing with you, blah, 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 blah. They know you're the stunt queen. You know, <laughs> they ain't say that part. I said that. But um, so then he created a master class called Turning Beef into Bread. It was supposed to be a two-hour virtual master class. Now, from what I've heard about these, and I've almost snuck in them before, but I was like, I can't, I can't stomach giving him, even if I'm doing it for content, unless y'all want to just go and send it and be like, Vail, here go the money. I need you to go in there and see <laughs> But I have not been able to stomach the idea of spending money, even if I'm just being nosy uh, for content purposes. I shouldn't say even being nosy. I'm researching. <laughs> even for research purposes, I just can't. I haven't been able to spend my money on it. But um, he's done this before. He charged $75. What I've heard is that people uh, with the previous ones, people weren't getting the links. There was a problem, a major problem with the other one. And I think he even had to give out some kind of apology on some level, technical issues, all this other stuff. But anyway, so this is a part of the grift. He constantly does this as well. I haven't really, I haven't heard anything about this yet. Not saying there's nothing out there, but I haven't run into any comments uh, of people with, you know, not having broken links or anything like that or any response from it. I do know that's rinse and repeat as well. Like it's the same. Um, why people think they could follow a person who tells them I make money by creating drama <laughs> and they think that this is a successful business model for them and their uh, clothing store or their construction company or their <laughs> or their catering business. This don't work for everybody. It only works for sociopathic predators. This ain't going to work for you. I don't know, but, you know, to each his own. Have it. Um, then Darius, you know, he, he taunts. He continues. And he posts, uh, you're wondering where your view, your views went. Meanwhile, I'm the blueprint. Who are you talking to? I don't even know what that means. <laughs> Whose views went anywhere? <laughs> and the people, when your views go up, they go up because of the fact that people are watching your drama because they're waiting to see people um, expose you as usual, per usual. Was that another? Oh, oh, oh. I'm sorry, y'all. That's what I'm a little. Um, there's one other. Yeah, there was one other video. So, um, so after this, wait, let me make sure. Yeah. Oh no, I'm gonna just do this one. Then I'll, then I'll do this next part. So then, and then we got the flying monkeys, aka D hags. You know, we use them terms interchangeably. They're the flying monkeys or D hags, whatever y'all want to call them. Commenting. There's a bunch of them. This is just one I put in here for us tonight. Uh, Carolyn Andrew Glover says, 
the Juanito, uh, Juanito collection, Darius Crook's friend, you are petty and I love it. And then he responds, petty AF. Yes, he is. He is that. But they encourage it. So they're not there saying the way that you, you know, your food and all of this is great. She's saying she enjoys his petty. That's part of the cult. There, there's different demographics within this cult. But I'm going to break that down in, in another, when we get to that series, where I break down the DHAG cult and that there are different tiers and levels. There are some people who do watch him truly for the food, the unhealthy um, diabetes in inducing um, food that goes against everything that a, a bariatric patient should ever do. But um, there's that level. And then there's those who don't understand business at all and think he really is running this successful business because they're just kind of enamored by the glitzy part and these fake screenshots of bank accounts and stuff. And then, you know, there's just all. And then there's the the hags, the true hags. They're the F hags. I, I ain't going to use that F A G word, but they are F hags. And they love to have, you know, the the gay best friend and all of that and the gay cousin and he's like that to them and then you have the ones who are just lonely and ain't got no existence outside of waiting for an instagram alert that he's gone live for the 15th time that day with his taco meat showing on his uh hairy gray chest um and they're they're hoping to convert him they're hoping to catch him on a on a day where he will grace them by um, squirting on them or something. I don't know. I don't know. It's too much. Too much. But I don't know. There's all these different levels. There's more. There's more. I'm breaking it down. I'm telling y'all. I got a deep research project going on over here. But anyway, so all of that happens. Darius Crooks is now saying he's so successful and this is why you don't mess with me because I will uh, make money off of you and that should hurt you. Now, in this particular case, well, make money off scamming my hags and this should hurt you. <laughs> What? <laughs> Meanwhile, my bank account is fine. <laughs> hasn't no numbers have left because <laughs> you're scamming them. None. But anyway, um, he does that, and then uh, so he calls himself going on live. No, he recorded a video to brag about the fact that uh, he's made all his money, made all his money off of the Juanito situation. Um, and then to, you know, he's above Juanita, which always what throws me off is when these sort of things happen, he always belittles a working class person. And what's mind blowing to me is that he's belittling working class people when those are the people who support him. So you're talking about a person who makes $18 an hour like they're less than you, less than a per less than a person. Meanwhile, Many of your worker, no, many of your hags are making that or less and getting on those payment plans to buy your overpriced, the $9 pot that you charge $129 for, they're, <laughs> they're getting on payment plans to buy that one pot for you from you because they make $18 an hour or whatever. And you're belittling people who make that amount, but they don't see it as an insult to them as well. Because it ain't really about Juanito. It's about his superiority complex that he thinks he's better than anyone who's working class when he forgets that he was working class and couldn't hold down a job and got fired from every single job that he had, mostly from scamming and all of the other stuff. We, you know, I've shared a couple of that story. Remember, um, what was that? Sure Payroll, Darius? Was that Sure Payroll that fired you for trying to scam um, when you created that deluxe payroll company? It was a scam. I didn't know that at the time. You had me close to a scam. I didn't know. God damn it. Police could have arrested me and all that. Thinking I was a part of your um, stunt queenery. But um, that was, I think it was, I know it was deluxe payroll, but I think you worked for sure payroll. And you remember you created that fake payroll company and then you tried to steal uh, sure pay. I'm thinking the, the company you worked for was sure payroll. He also worked for ADP, but because uh, he loves to throw out people's uh, history and doxing and all that. I'm like, my little. Tell everything. So anyway, um, when you lived on, what's that like? That was on Central. When you lived on Central in that apartment with the, the balcony, um, the little concrete balcony. But um, yeah, because I remember you was in the room, you was, you know, um, creating a fake website. I didn't know it was fake. I thought you was really starting a legitimate company. I didn't know, I didn't know you was a sunk queen at that point. 
But remember when you were starting that company, you did that and then you tried to steal their legitimate customers, uh, their the businesses that did payroll services with them. And then they found out. And then remember when you told me, uh, oh, I got to shut all this down. I got to delete all this stuff. Like he, he was trying to shut down the website and stuff. Uh, so because they had got wind of it. Some, oh, I think one of the customers called there saying, did you know your rep is trying to recruit me for, <laughs> for their company? But what I really think is it was a scam. I really think Darius was trying to get now. This is that part is alleged because but he's such a stunt queen looking at the history of like him always trying to get people's financial inter- information, having the, the above 701 credit card credit repair scam that the state of Georgia find him for. Um, he has a judgment out there for that. That's still, we're going to talk about that one day. We're still going to get to it. But um, having that, um, I think his plan was to get the information because now you have employees information. You got social security numbers, et cetera, et cetera. Because I always wonder when you got evicted from, was that Huron? Was that apartment on Huron? I feel like it was on Huron. When I first, I felt, yeah, that was like when I first met you. Uh, you lived on Huron and then you got evicted within a few months of me knowing you. And then you stayed with me for about two months. No, I'm sorry, two weeks, two weeks. And you you had lost your car. You Your car had got repossessed. Because remember, you used to live like regular folks too. Like you had a real life struggle um and you haven't always had money that you know before you scammed all these people i think that's why you scam because you don't want to go back to that right i mean god is going to sift your money as wheat like it's going to happen i mean it may not happen in that way like you might be in jail and just lose access to it all i don't i don't know how it's going to work out that's on god god had god ain't talked to me about that part yet he just told me i got to continue this that's the only part i know right now you know god reveals it when he's ready but anyway so um what, what I always had started to question down the line, like, you know, back in the day, I, before I knew you was a stunt queen, I used to think like, oh, he's such a hard worker that somehow miraculously he has saved up enough money within two weeks to get on his feet and have a security deposit and first month's rent and whatever else you had to have for that apartment on Lake that you end up getting evicted from that later on too down the line. But um, yeah, I was just like, wow. And it was a nice apartment. He always got a nice apartment though. Yeah. Always got nice apartments. Um, but now what I have um, surmised based on this decade long of just sprawling receipts of your scamation, building a scampire, is that you somehow scammed with that. That's how you got enough money in two weeks. Because was you even working? No, because you had, actually you had also lost, damn, I forgot this part. You had also lost your job. <laughs> I ain't laughing like that somebody losing a job, but I'm laughing at the irony of me not realizing back then because I was just a trusting person. Like, I, I don't know a lot of I don't know scammers personally, except for you, Darius Crooks, <laughs> like the people we grew up. I mean, you know, that we hung out with. I still hang out with all of them, even though you lied on live and said um, I'm not friends with them no more. We, we was just in Mexico. Where did we recently go? Were we just in Mexico? My friends got to let me know. Gil, I don't know if Gil's still there. But anyway, we were just out of town like a few weeks, a, few, a month or so ago, whatever it was. But we're always traveling. So, um, but yeah, so it just occurred to me, like over time hearing all this, I was like, that stunt queen was scamming back then. That's how he was able to get enough money in two weeks. I mean, you're a good scammer because you was able, even back then, and you was only 20 then. So you've had a lot of practice. You've had a lot of practice. So that's why, like, when you see a person like Juanito, who's a hardworking a uh, young man, you know, working behind the counter for $18 an hour, making an honest living. Um, you've come so far away from that with all this scamation that you've forgotten that that was once your story. Actually, you didn't even make $18. Well, no, you when you work for CPS, because, uh, you know, you lied a lot to get jobs. So uh, when you lied to get that job at CPS, uh, you were working in payroll. Did you do some scamming there? Is that why they fired you from that? I'm wondering. I don't know. We'll look into all that later. Anyway, uh, I, I've gotten sidetracked. Y'all, y'all getting me sidetracked. We ain't got to the comments yet. All right. So last thing is Darius Crooks forgetting all of that history. And that's so much more, but those are little pieces I just remembered. Forgetting all of that history now wants to educate Juanito, who through his actions has now been fired. Meaning Darius Crooks has created such a toxic thing 
Juanito was like, all bets are off. I'm at home. I'm finna, <laughs> I'm going to war. I'm doing, <laughs> I'm just saying whatever. And that shit was funny. <laughs> so, Juanito, we got our lives from it. Unfortunately, because you were the low man on the total pole, it wasn't a good look for the business. And Darius's D hags were, you know, harassing that business and all of that. And so, um, you know, y'all lost, um, they had to let you go. That's just, you know, how it, what happened. So anyway, so Darius reveling in all of that, like, Ooh, see, you don't mess with me. He then did a video where he calls himself educating Juanito about, uh, Customer service, something Darius Crooks is horrible at. This is partially in part of why he's known as a scammer throughout the, these United States of America and internationally. Oop. I was going to say that yet. <laughs> Patreon know what I'm talking about. We're going to get to it, though. But anyway, that's why he's known as a, as a scammer. Um, because he's horrible at customer service and other things, um, but also a predator and all this other stuff. But now he's going to educate this this hardworking man uh, because he's he made money off of uh, this beef. So let's listen to this. So this what what this is is the video that he did where he's you know he's talking about his greatness and why you don't mess with him and nobody should touch him and. All of these other things, everyone should run in fear. All of y'all, he wasn't talking to me because he know I ain't scared of him. Um, so what I did was clip it up because it was like, I don't know, 30 minutes or something of his rambling. And so I was like, oh, I know what I can do with this. And so this is what I did with it. Enjoy. Oh, it looks like we're getting one of those rare peeks into Darius Crooks actually telling some truths about how he is a internet influencer who is able to continue his wrath of predatory practices and scamming and sociopathic behavior. And in this recent uh, clip that I grabbed, Darius finally admits some of this publicly. And he has a warning for any of you who may choose to attempt to speak truth to his predatory practices. And for everybody else, who's on the outside looking in, uh, feeling like you, um, I don't know, want to go up against me, want to challenge me. Don't, don't. I don't have anything to lose, right? And he tells you right there that one of the reasons you would never want to come against him and speak any truths about uh, being wrongfully treated or scammed or expose any of his negative predatory behavior towards you He's letting you know that he has nothing to lose, which basically means he's morally bankrupt. But let's continue. Once your name is trashed on an, a national level, you know, Forbes and Black Enterprise, that's it. I, I, what else can you do? You've done it all. And he also goes on to finally admit that his brand and his name is really officially trash at a national level which means that he's fully aware that he's been relegated to scamming his same D-hags repeatedly because the mass public definitely has the common sense and critical thinking skills that it takes to know a scammer from the fruits that they bear or the lack thereof in this case. So I have nothing to lose and the world to gain. And he also confirms what I've said and many others have, that all he cares about is worldly gains and not his followers or having a good heart or being a person that is purpose-driven for leaving this world better than he found it. He's letting us know that he only uses the Christianity and Baptist Church Act to indoctrinate his blind following of D-hags to get their hard-earned money by overcharging them for the cheap goods he gets from the Alibaba.com website where he marks up those products 200 to 400% above his cost. So I'm at a really great advantage point so I'm just saying, like, you got to be very careful when you do that kind of out here on the internet. And it doesn't go away, man. And he admits that he's aware that his actions on the internet have not gone away. Meaning the documented proof of his decades plus of scamming and predatory practices that continues to present day is receding all over these internet streets. And of course, I'll continue to share those with you. So definitely hit that follow button. 
And like the actions you're doing in that, somebody's screen recording that, somebody watching that, you know? And he is very correct. There is always someone screen recording and watching to continue to expose this horrible internet predator. Yes, so so that um watching that video, so that was clips of that 30 minute um rambling of him him talking about his greatness and how everyone must fear him because see what I did to him, I was able to get him fired or my flying monkeys, my D-hags were able to get him fired um or create enough, you know, humbugging that uh, he ended up getting fired. And so it's kind of a warning shot to the rest of you that um, don't speak up because that's what he does uh, in order to continue his grifting. There's, you know what I'm gonna do first? I'm gonna do this last piece and I'm real quick on this one. Uh, so the part two of to this um, is that there's a new victim on the horizon. Uh, this guy, and this, I just literally found out about this like 45 minutes before I was going live with y'all. So I couldn't dig too, too deep, but there's this new guy who his name is Corey. I ain't going to do too much promoting because I ain't a fan of what's happening here, <laughs> but this guy, Corey is a bartender influencer and he's trying to grow his brand and Darius has put out somewhere that he was looking for a bartender um, for Chicago, whatever's supposed to be happening. Again, I don't follow him like that, y'all. <laughs> I know it might seem like I do, but I really don't. I get most of my information by looking at uh, what other people saying, and then I, I'm like, oh, that sounds interesting. Let me find out more about that. Uh, or otherwise, I'm just scrolling and laughing. <laughs> but anyway, so this was interesting because I was like, oh, he's found a new victim. So this guy is a social media influencer slash bartender. He has a bartending company. He's trying to grow it, et cetera, et cetera. He finds out that Darius is looking for a bartender in Chicago area for something. I don't know if this is permanent. I don't know if it's just for an event or what. But he then tells his followers, you know, basically, uh, y'all, you know, uh, spam him, hit me up at him, you know, try to get Darius attention and suggest me sort of thing. That's what happens. He talks to Darius. Uh, he ends up partnering with Darius um, or, or is about to partner with Darius uh, for whatever they're doing, whatever this thing is. I'm, I'll find out more details and, and get back to y'all with that. So this guy is aware of all of the stuff. And from what I'm, what I saw in a couple of comments or whatever was that he's actually been in response to Darius's clapping back at people and doing things. And he's been cheerleading it. So he ain't far off the cusp we need a word for the d hags uh d the male d hags um i don't know i'll figure that out but y'all help me if y'all got something in the comments but so this is a male hag is there such thing as a male hag <laughs> so anyway this dude is um feels like and he did a live stream he did like a 38 minute live stream i haven't had a chance to watch it yet i was like i ain't probably gonna watch it anyway it's 38 minutes um of him talking about this particular situation of starting to work for Darius because what he's hearing is a lot of people coming out of woodwork like dude this ain't gonna go well <laughs> like this ain't what you think it is and his perspective is nah you know he 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 good we had a, he not gonna scam me because I got my money up I'm getting my money up front or whatever all these things so he he got this all figured out the rest of us we don't know what's happening he he's smarter than the rest of us. This ain't going to be his story. He ain't going to be one of the, the victims. So um, <laughs> he's thinking that he's going to be able to benefit from a dysfunctional uh, situation. And I just I'm going to watch, you know, I'm just going to watch. And then I'll let you let all of you know, um, you know, how this is going to go. Um, what I, so his, his perspective, Corey, is that Darius has this one point, whatever million followers. What he doesn't realize is that most of them ain't real. <laughs> smoke and mirrors, smoke and mirrors. Um, uh, most of them ain't real. So that's part of the problem. It ain't as many as you think it is. Uh, it, it's, it's a few to give you a couple dollars here and there for sure. 
but it ain't what you think it is. And then only a small percentage of people actually follow somebody when somebody like, oh, follow them. It ain't like the whole following come over to you. Um, the other piece, so he thinks that he's going to be able to grow his business through association. But what he doesn't understand is that he's operating with a predator, a person who the last thing that Darius actually wants for anyone is for them to grow from his platform or in general. That's just not the kind of person he is. Um, it, you can look at his track record. Who can you point to that Darius has ever worked with that he has had influence on their success? That's something to, something to think about, right? Who? I mean, I can name people he's dealt with. Has any of them... Have any of them been able to succeed or benefit from it? His mentor, mentors, I mean, I'm sorry, mentees, anybody? No. So I would say just ask uh, Sonny Anderson, Zeta Cooks, who was his former friend. We used to hang out together. Um, she also was his co-host on his podcast. She's a successful um chef here in Chicago. Now she's like really growing her brand. He stopped being friends with her because he um, said uh, she wasn't growing her brand quick enough. Fast enough. That only makes sense. The truth was he was threatened by her talent because she had a good, she has a good heart. I still communicate with. She has a great heart um, and she can cook well smoking, like looks beautiful. All of that. She has it. And he was threatened by that because people on the podcast, you know, he's or person, he's condescending and everything else. And people were reading that through the podcast. So people didn't really like him, but they loved her. That was a problem. So he had to end that relationship. Uh, you have the travel agent of the Cruising with Darius uh, Crooks fiasco. She was a successful travel agent, was putting the stuff together. He saw how much money he was. she was making. He didn't want her to make that kind of money. He wanted to make it himself. So then he cut her out and started trying to do it himself. The ish fell apart and people were <laughs> rooms messed up, all kind of stuff. And, and that became a fiasco. We'll talk about that one day. Then you got Danny Rose, a.k.a. Uh, Stovetop Kisses. I probably should have put these people's pictures there. Danny Rose, a.k.a. Stovetop Kisses. She was part of uh, a collaborative that he was working with and they were friends. She was up and coming. He was a little bit bigger than her. And um, he stole her business, her center treats business. First, he was like, we should partner together. These are great. I love these. Teach me how to make these. She teaches him how to make them. She has an emergency with her father who was ill. She goes back to the South. Get a father. You, we can tell because we just talked about Kim uh, this past couple of days. He don't care about nobody and caring for their parents because he ain't got no parents. So he, well, that's not true. He got a mama. But he ain't got no relationship with his parents. And so he don't understand that. And so he used that as an opportunity to be a predator and stole the business, trademarked it, and stole her center treats business from under her. She don't even want to talk about it today. But because of the gravity of the story, um, and I know that it can help other people, I, sh I, I share it. And I'm not sharing it to hard, hurt or harm her, but because I know that this story can help others. Um, but anyway harmed her so bad she won't even talk about it um and we got proof of that because there's <laughs> the one of my highest viewed videos here on facebook uh is that video where i got i just clipped me talking about where kev on stage the comedian the gospel kind of comedian kev on stage but well, he's grown beyond that now but kev on stage denounced darius crooks publicly on twitter on social media saying i denounce him i have no association with him i don't want nothing to do with him I found out from my friend Danny Rose what he did to her and she didn't want me to speak about it. And so I was just quiet. But then people started thinking I was complicit with what he was doing. So I had to come out publicly and say, I denounced this scammer, this predator. So we got Danny Rose. So kids, very successful now on TV, all this stuff, all the stuff he wanted. But that's because she's serving. She's using her gift to serve and not to take. And so she's succeeding like tap to Brown. We want to be her, too. He didn't know her, but he wanted to be her. Then you got the Black Food Network crea uh, creator network that he created. Danny Rose was part of that collaborative. 
He created um, this was when he was a little smaller. He was growing, though. He was bigger than most of the people he and he would see talented influencers, co uh, cooks, influencers. And he'd be like, "Ooh, I like what they got. I want that like a vampire. I'm going to get their blood. And then he would um, befriend them because he's charismatic. Like, we're not going to take that from him. He's smart and he's charismatic. I, again, I'm going to always speak the truth, whether it's in favor of the, the predator, the scammer, the stunt queen, the sissy. I'm going to always speak the truth. Truth is, he is charismatic, so he he can pull you in. I was friends with him for a decade. Pull me in. So he pulls in these various cooks. Um, there was a handful of them. I can't remember the number. It was five to seven of them or so. They eventually started dropping like flies because they were like, "This nigga's a predator. He's trying to he's trying to steal my intellectual property," which is what he was trying to do. Trying to undercharge me. He's trying to build his platform from my gifts. And so they all started falling apart. And that fell apart. That fell apart. Then we got uh, Bruce. Bruce was his mentee from Chicago, moved to Atlanta to help him um, with the business he stole from Stovetop Kisses, the Center Treats business. Uh, the only thing is he had stole her recipe on like the dough and all that. But she had held back that icing. And that icing was the key. And so he um, had Bruce cooking. Bruce B. Cooking is his name. Bruce was cooking, <laughs> cooking them, well, bacon, really. <laughs> Bruce was cooking and baking them uh, center treats, but he couldn't get it right because Darius is not, it's not as great of a business person as everyone thinks. Like, he doesn't know everything. No one knows everything. And so Darius has always been bad with packaging and um, delivery, the delivering piece of it. There's always a disconnect there. Like, he's the presentation and all that. That's always a little disconnect there. And so am I going on too long, y'all? Y'all let me know. Somebody said you can't hear me. I can't hear you. Nicole M can't hear me. Vel, is Nicole the only one who cannot hear me? Am I talking too low? Maybe that's what it was. Maybe I was talking too low. But let me know. I need to see the chat moving to know. I can share more. Okay. I'm like, why is the chat taking so long? <laughs> and then all of them come together. Okay. Thank you, y'all. <laughs> thank everybody. <laughs> because I'm like, okay, I can see myself on YouTube. It's moving. But um, okay, so and and do I do, Okay, now I'm almost at three hours. This is crazy. Okay, I'm finna end it at um. I'm gonna end it at the three hour mark. Uh, we got twenty minutes, and I'm wrapping up wherever we at. I'm just hitting the end button, and we out of here. And then we'll we'll be back tomorrow. But anyway, um, then we have the um, yeah, Bruce B. Cooking. So you know they they couldn't figure out the recipe uh, for the ice, and it just it just wasn't right. People wasn't happy with it. So the business he stole from Stovetop Kisses. Uh, ended up uh, crashing and burning, crashing and burning. Stovetop Kisses, she ended up um, starting, she had to, you know, start the business again and rename it and all that. And so she was doing that and she eventually moved on to bigger and, you know, greater things. Then you have the interior designer of the Greens and Gravy restaurant who Darius, similar to this situation that Corey is finding himself in. Um, she, Darius, through his charisma and using his following, because even back when I knew him, when I did the work for him at the Cupcake Gallery, some of y'all know that story. When I did the work for him at the Cupcake Gallery, he um, tried to barter with me. And part of the way that I, now this is the first time I was ever charging him for anything, but part of the way that he was able to get me to discount it even more was he told me that uh, basically I would get referrals to it. Like people are going to see your work here at, you know, and I'm going to send people your way. And I was like, okay, all right, you're a friend. I'm already charging you less, but okay. On top of that. Yes. Okay. Fine. Guess what happened? No one ever got <laughs> referred my way and not because of my work. Cause I always got referrals and stuff. So same thing. Fast forward a decade or so later when he's opening the greens and gravy restaurant, building it out interior designer, you know, AKA contractor, uh, she's designing the place from what I hear. Well, I've seen pictures too. Looks nice from what he could afford at that time. And he barters with her too. So she charges him way less than what she normally would. Cause he's like, Oh, I got all these a hundred thousand followers and uh, I can, um, you know, they're going to see you working and you know, you're going to make a lot of money off me. So uh, she, she agrees and she does the work and she's paying the contractor out of her pocket. Cause you know, Darius is um, rich 
And so she's like, of course he's going to pay me. Garrison didn't pay her. He did not pay her. He did not pay her so much so that she had to sue him. I have those legal documents. So I, you know, I got a lot of stuff around here, y'all. But um, yes. And uh, she sued him, civil court, of course. And he did not pay her until the day before the court hearing. And I think it was like four or $5,000. I'm like, it wasn't even a lot of money. And you supposed to be so rich. You're supposed to be so rich. So, and then there's Christy. So speaking of greens and gravy restaurant, we got Christy. Christy is a long-term former friend of his from Chicago. I knew Christy, know Christy. Um, I've known her, you know, well over a decade and um, met her through Darius. She ended up coming, she ended up moving to Atlanta to support Darius when he opened the uh, Greens and Gravy restaurant. You remember this, Darius? Remember when you opened the restaurant and um, because you're not good, you're like your people skills are horrendous. Um, like you, you know, you can finagle and you can scam your way into creating these businesses, but to maintain them has always been your issue. You know this, like if we're going to talk truth, truth. Um, and so what happened was within two weeks, he was falling apart, wouldn't get out to bed, locked himself in his bedroom, not locked himself in the restaurant where he should have been because <laughs> the damn thing was open, <laughs> locked himself in his bedroom. Christy, being a supportive friend, talking to him on the phone. Oh, my friend is going through it. My friend I've known all these years. She had a job. She was getting ready to leave anyway. She offers to come down and support her friend. She says she gets to Atlanta. She's now packed up her stuff. She's moving to Atlanta. She's moved in with him to help him run this restaurant. And when she um, gets there, she says he is locked in his room. Dark, darkness. She, he gives her instructions uh, on what needs to happen, et cetera, et cetera. And she's like, I got you. He don't go with her to the restaurant and give her, walk her around and train her. That ain't his style. That ain't how he operate. And she eventually, you know, she takes over the restaurant or whatever. She manages it and they start winning awards in the neighborhood and all kind of stuff. Like you see pictures of her with celebrities and all of that. So she's the reason why that restaurant really, you know, was successful. Now here's the problem. So, cause this is, this is what uh, Corey will find out, uh, you know, sooner than later. This ain't going to last long. Corey's going to find out that anytime Darius sees you starting to be successful in your own thing, living your own purpose, he's gonna, it's going to bother him. It's going to that's, that's going to make him cut you off. It was kind of what happened with us as well. Like, I never wanted to be under his, uh, it, you know, riding his coattails and all that. I always had my own, own other ish going. And when his stuff couldn't be a priority for me, that was starting to be towards the end of our relationship. I didn't know that at the time. You know, I know that now. Um, but anyway, um, Christy had her own. She has a, a coffee a coffee business. And so she was doing things on the weekends, et cetera, with her coffee business. Well, Darius doesn't want you to succeed, doesn't want you to have anything outside of depending on him. and he ended up turning that into her trying to make money off of him. Some, some or other, you let him tell it. I, I do have that uh, video footage as well of his version of the story. So anyway, he turns it into her being like an evil, greedy person who's trying to take advantage of him. That's what he always does. Everyone, everyone is taking advantage of him. He's never, never the person who never, he's the common denominator. Now, how many people I'm talking about? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, well, I'm, I got eight bullet points that I've gotten through, but remember one of them was the collaborative with six or seven C. So we're going to say I'm at about 18 people. And these are the ones I just jotted down right before this live. Y'all, <laughs> this is off the top of my head. This ain't me going through my, my stuff. So we had 18 people, all of them wrong. But who's the common denominator denominator? Anyway, so after that, let's we just fast forward. There's more to that story. We fast forward. Then we have um Marcel more recently. Let's fast forward a little bit. More recently, it was his last year. Marcel, his former uh sous, sous chef. Um, Marcel was helping him with the dining with Darius Crooks events. Marcel, he was putting them on camera everywhere, you know, always putting people on camera. And Marcel was, you know, young, impressionable and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. He then turns it into 
uh, all of a sudden, you could see what happened was the night before, and I think I do have, yeah, I do have that footage. The night before, you could tell that there was something happening between Darius and Marcel, where Darius was irritated by Marcel, and you could tell Marcel kind of had had enough. Marcel was kind of doing actions on camera that were almost like F this Negro kind of thing, like um, doing stuff in front of the camera. I can't remember the particulars in this in this moment because I'm going way too long for, <laughs> with this live. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so the next thing we know, Darius Cooks Crooks is on camera rolling dough for them biscuits, <laughs> uh, talking about how he has let Marcel go. Now, first he says it's a private situation. You know, he can't talk about his employees, um, you know, uh, privacy and all these other things. So I was like, yeah, he effed up. Then people was like, uh-uh, you messed this up. You did something to him, all of that. And so he's saying it. So now he's like, I got to do damage control. So then he hops on uh, his Instagram live the next morning, laying in bed, doing girl talk with uh, Larry uh Larry Reed lie and they on their cackling and Larry Reed is uh, acting like he's just asking him questions Darius questions in general you know like girl talk and mentions um somehow the employees comes up and he's like oh I fired um my my uh sous chef or whatever and he's like oh man you fire more people than blah 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 all this stuff and so then that's Darius's lead in. I'm like, they didn't script this out. This is like Mean Girls. <laughs> I'm like watching watching an episode of Mean Girl. <laughs> I'm watching them <laughs> read the script. <laughs> I'm like, they talked about this before. This is, but the hags, <laughs> they don't see through that. They don't see through that. And so he gets on there and then starts to slowly drag Marcel, um, and talk about like he did some some egregious things. He never really. I don't think he ever got into specifics with it, but he. Definitely made it as if Marcel was a bad person or had done things that just he had to fire him. Like they were un, uh, unethical. That, yeah. And I think he even used those words now. It's slowly coming back to me. So we, we have that. Now, keep in mind, everyone we've gone through, especially like we talk about the Marcel and stuff. These are people without platforms. These are everyday people who just happen to work with an influencer predator because they think that they can somehow benefit from it. Like Corey. But yeah. Corey, Corey, by Corey. Then we have Q. Q was uh, Darius's former cook in this past, um, past, past summer, whatever, last summer. Uh, Q left. Yeah, yeah some of y'all know. Q left in. Um, I don't know when y'all should know. I don't follow him like that. <laughs> like if I don't have notes <laughs> and my research. <laughs> But Q left uh, probably around the holiday season or something like that. Uh, all of a sudden, he, Darius Crooks, the predator, the stunt queen, the sissy, is saying that he has left, uh, he, his, he's uh, let go of Q. Now he had, um, what's the other guy's name? Ram Ramon? Ramon? Yeah, I think it's Ramon and Q. Ramon, Ramon has remained with him. He lets go of Q. He never quite says why. Q has a family, you know, wife and grandkids and all this other stuff. But Q was a, a didn't back down to Darius and would drag Darius and, and kind of, you know, call him out. And he said some stuff on camera that would give up Darius's tea, too. Um, and so I could see why. So Darius claims after the fact that the only reason Q lasted as long as he did because uh, was because of Crystal, who is. Darius is Crook's primary hag. She sits on the throne next to him. She is head D hag in, in charge. And so um, he says that she's the one who basically uh, had Q being able to hang on as long as he has. Now, what Darius also does, because he's a predator, and this is what predators do. Pay attention. Predators always hire uh, or bring in people in the fold who need them or have something that they can hold against or over their head if they are ever let go of uh, or you know or the relationship ends when Darius and I knew each other he hadn't developed that model yet because otherwise he would he would have never you know we would have never been friends and all of the other stuff because I'm not the person that you just got a bunch of stuff you can hold over me 
So what he does with his employees and with his chefs, uh, like the job ad that he had out a few months ago for this new group that he has, is that he was welcoming those with uh, criminal records. And I was like, this is funny. Not saying that no one should have second chances. That's not the angle I'm coming from at all. I, I truly, truly, truly believe that everyone should deserve, you know, second and even up to a third chance. And so I'm, I'm down with that. But when it comes to a predator, they use people like that because they can always hold something over their head. Why would I have an NDA with you, um, non-disclosure, because I'm a predator and all of that. Now I want you to reveal my scams when, if we part ways. Why would I do that with you that you can still break secretly in some ways when I can find out your deepest, darkest secrets, your criminal record, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And he's going to befriend them and make it more friendly as he's collecting this data. But then when they fall out or something happened, then it's like, remember, I'm going to tell about that what happened when you were 16 years old or you know what you was just in prison for. Meanwhile, he's got the hags falling in love with these people. Ooh, cue this and cue that. But as soon as Derry or Marcel this and Mister that and, and Christy this and Christy that. And so, but when he falls out with him, that hateful bitch, I never liked her no way. Uh, he looked greasy anyway. He's da da da. He's a broke anyway. Like, <laughs> it's, like it's a cult. Whoever he falls out with, they fall out with. It's crazy. So anyway. And we're moving quickly. We've got two more, and then I'm letting y'all go for real. <laughs> then we got the food photographer. What did I forget? I forgot. I meant to look up her name because for some reason it was kind of Melanie. Is it Melanie? It's something. I wish the, if y'all know it, let me know. But anyway, his food photographer, who he has worked with for somewhere around five years or so, um, they recently parted rate waves. This was, I was on a trip when this went down. I don't know, y'all. I travel so much. He called. He he says I'm broken, everything else, and um, miserable because I couldn't um, ride his coattails. Meanwhile, I travel so much I can't even remember the last places I've been to. <laughs> but anyway, I was on the trip coming back from somewhere. I can't, I can't remember where that was. Somebody let me know where I was. <laughs> what was that? I remember the airport. I just can't remember. Was that? Were we in the country? We were in the country. Oh, that was a cruise. We were out the country. <laughs> that was a cruise. I went to. Um, where did I go? Somewhere. <laughs> but anyway, I was on a cruise, coming back from the cruise. And um, this is when it was hitting the fan that he had fallen out with his uh, food photographer, who everyone knew it was coming. Because she was one of the people cackling online when the um, when the Andrew Codwell thing happened with Darius. Y'all, I did a video on that. I'm going to repost some of that stuff and clip them down and all that for TikTok. So anyway, he was on there. Uh, um, she was on that video cackling in the background like, ha, 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 I always get paid by him. Ha, 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 ha. And everything there said, ha, 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 ha. And I was like, your turn coming. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> your turn coming. <laughs> you looks like an idiot. Ha, 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 ha. So fast forward months later, all of a sudden she's not around. And everybody's asking in these live streams because, you know, the hags, flying monkeys. They fall in love with everybody he fall in love with or everyone that he, you know, is around. They, they're part of the cast. And so everybody loving her. And then all of a sudden she stops showing up and the wings stop flapping as much. And then they like, where's she at? Where's she at? Where's she at? And he's like, oh, she she's sending staff. You know, she's she's working for Pinky. Oh, shit. I forgot to put her on here. Pinky, slutty vegan, y'all. Why he why he come after her, too? He owned his, oh God, y'all, we could do this for like another four, five, six hours. <laughs> Pinky, slutty vegan, who's very doing very well now, food in, in supermarkets across the country and all, all kind of great stuff. Multiple restaurants, food trucks, all that. All the stuff he wanted to be. but And he could have been. I'm not taking, again, I'm going to always speak truth to it. Darius had the capacity to be that. It's the predatory sociopathic behavior, the mental disorder that he has that got in the way of it all because he feels like he can run all this but well he's a predator let's start there he's a sociopath let's start there but then be you know when you get past those mental uh deficiencies then we get to the point of the fact that he um doesn't uh, he thinks he knows everything so he doesn't have the ability to work with other people and build a team that can help him grow even more all that good stuff anyway 
So Pinky, see, now nah, I can't get off the subject. But oh, okay, but this is what I was saying with that. So Pinky, Slutty Vegan, used to have a restaurant. Her restaurant was on the corner. Their restaurants would buy each other. He had greens and gravy, and Slutty Vegan was right on the corner. He calls himself trying to be in competition with her, and he was hating on her and doing hateful things and, and doing things. So they didn't get along. So like when I'm talking, when I just told you about like the Danny Rose kind of stuff, he was doing that kind of level of sneaky, hateful stuff. But again, now he's reviewing black businesses, you know, black restaurants. I'm supporting black businesses. Show me a black business you've supported besides giving, you know, buying something from them. Show me one that you've helped raise up from the ashes. Just one. OK, so then um, so his food photographer ended up starting to work with Slutty Vegan and a lot of other places. And the woman, the woman does amazing work. I love her work. I don't love her ethics. For dealing with a scammer and i'm sure she feels that way now now that she knows better so anyway yeah um uh, tracy go he got an issue with every 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 successful black person <laughs> he got an issue with like he's a hateful person he plays he's very charismatic but that's part of the scam we got more yeah i ain't done like i'm not gonna talk about him tonight but i'm saying that this is this is the short list uh tracy this is a short list come back we, we work our way through the rest so um, so his food photographer, all of a sudden, she's not showing. She's not being around as much. She starts to try to send another crew, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm thinking, you know, she's distancing her, herself from this, this drama, this stunt queen. So eventually, the, the fallout officially happens. And his version is that they had a conversation. She said something, and they, they disagreed. And he she ended up saying stuff that took him there. And he said some things to her that he wouldn't even repeat because he she made him come out of character and all of these other things. She never wants she hasn't said anything because, um, again, she knows the drill because she's been around him for enough years to see what happened to everyone else that fell by the wayside. This is how he operates and this is how he scares people into uh, submission and, and being quiet and silencing them. This is the, the part of the grift. I can grift more when there's less people talking about me or no people talking about me. And so they try to threaten people and dox them and all this other stuff to make them be quiet. Been there, done that. Anyway, um, so she, the only thing I've seen from her is that people, okay, so Dan Darius, because again, we talked about him, the vampire. He tries to steal people's gifts and all of that. And so he, whatever stuff he's learned from her over the years, He's now trying to be his own food photographer. Like on top of all this other stuff. And, so, and they think that he can't be a scammer. How is he running all of these various businesses and physically doing all of the work? He was just one of the posts I just read to y'all. He's packing boxes. How the hell are you packing boxes and you're your food photographer and you're your, your accountant and you're your traveling, uh, dying, uh, dining with dairy, uh, diarrhea and, you know, uh, doing your YouTube videos and your TikToks and all this. Other stuff. How are you doing all that? How you doing all that? Anyway, um, so <laughs> somebody sent her him his <laughs> amateur work, and she just uh, ended up chuckling like, <laughs> "Child, what?" <laughs> it was funny. Okay, so then, and again, moving moving faster. Um, lastly, for tonight at least, uh, Chef Carmen. I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with her. Honestly, I did not even know about her until Darius Crooks. Um, and he'll be happy to hear it because he's going to feel like he puts everybody on or whatever. But um, he, she was a loyal friend of his. And so when he was going through all of the, you know, public heat with Black Enterprise and uh, Forbes magazine and Fox 5 Atlanta and Southern Grit and uh, the Shade Room. And I mean, it was everywhere. Um yeah, and all the YouTubers talking about it and everything. He's just being a drug <laughs> to filth. And his brand be became trash, as he said in that video uh, that I just played for y'all. Um, Carmen had his back. She's another chef uh, influencer, cook influencer. And she had his back. Well, fast forward. She starts to have her own drama because uh, she's also a, a, a alleged. I don't know her like that. I know Darius is a scammer. I know that personally. But uh, Carmen is an alleged scammer, a cash app scammer from what they're saying. So anyway, she runs into her own drama 
And what happens instead of him doing returning the favor of protecting her, she protected her favorite scammer. He should in turn protect his alleged uh, scammer friend. That's not how he operates because it's always about him. So when she had her stuff going down, he immediately turned on her and turned it into his content. That's when he started blogging and, and sitting in front of a mic. And he literally talked about his, her drama with her girlfriend and ex-business partner and uh, wh whether or not her, ho her house was her house and all these other things. He literally created content on it. And she called him one day and he put her on speakerphone and recorded it. And then uh, and for his audience, for his for his flying monkeys and D hacks. And then um, put out uh, he, he ended up talking about it in a bunch of lives. It was content for him. Surprised he didn't do the T-shirt line and stuff. But that, you know, it takes it to be a certain level of beefing. And Carmen wasn't really beefing with him because she was like, we're real friends. What are you doing to me? Why are you talking about this? Why don't you just not say anything? And so he goes on one day and I, I was like, he is just a horrible person. He goes on one day to say, um, I mean, I would. I'm, I'm talking about it because I, I, I know I talked to her and had a conversation. And I feel like she told me I could talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think she told me I can talk about it. No, but he was doing it in a very sarcastic way. Uh, she hadn't told him she could, she wanted him to keep quiet. He had it on video with her on speakerphone. And I don't think she knew she was on speakerphone anyway. Um, and so he's a horrible friend as well, but that's just one example. Just one, just one, just one. So, but there's still a lot of people who hang out with him and all of that. The thing is, as long as you stay a flying monkey and a hag and everything he does is beautiful and you don't really you know, sometimes they'd be like, oh, Darius, you need to stop. Don't be don't be going back and forth with them. Oh, Darius, you crazy, blah, blah, blah. He can take that. That's OK. But if you'd be like, dude, this is not OK. You're really acting like a predator. You you know, the way you're doing this or that is not good. That's he's all better off. You're gone. He claims that he's being he's OK with being held accountable. But we have plenty of proof that contradicts that. So. Anyway, I have gone on and on. This was not planned. I was only going to do a good hour and a half, two hours. I knew I had too many topics, but I, this is on my heart. <laughs> so I'm hot. Cause Corey, Corey, you brought this out on my heart. And so you've been warned. <laughs> I mean, it's up to you. This is how you're going to be looking later though. <laughs> we'll see you. And I'll be adding you to the roll. You'll be the next bullet point. <laughs> Corey, the bartender. <laughs> All right, let's get through these comments. And then when this is done, I'm done. Uh, Vanessa says, did you see Darius throw his hands up at the manager because he was on the phone? I didn't notice that nuance, but I did uh, start your comment because um, I am going to look at, at this, that's those sort of things as well. If you know, if you understand body language, I just think if you're human, you, you can tell when someone's being condescending and and all of that. It was it was just all in the body language. Now, he will plead ignorance and act like he even went back um, and did a video. and He watched it with his audience saying, I know what y'all saying, because there was a lot of people calling him out about it. And he's like, I know what y'all saying, but um, I don't see it like y'all tell me like if I was wrong, let me know. He tries to play like he really cares when he doesn't says he has a lot of nerves i went to his restaurant here in chicago i drove all the way from the south side only to arrive with a we are uh we are sold out of food uh and there is a full restaurant yeah so this and that's the irony for for of all of this for me is that he presents himself like this perfect entrepreneur where, you know, I would respect him more in the whole situation more if he was honest about that part of it, like the struggles. He he doesn't he will only talk about the struggles when he can turn it into. And look how great I am now. I used to do these dining with Darius events by myself. And now uh, I got a team, but I could still do it by myself. Like, but talk about the real struggle of being able to do it by yourself. Talk about the struggle of opening up these restaurants when you couldn't afford to pay the interior designer and contractor. So you scammed them 
or floated them for a year or so until two days before the, the lawsuit, the, the hearing for the lawsuit, because you ain't had the money really or whatever. You was robbing Peter Pay Paul, like whatever that truth is, instead of this perfect scenario that you keep painting that makes you so great at doing master classes because you have all the answers when you i've had a new waitress and she was so nervous i told her not to worry she's doing a great job and i'm very uh very patient person yeah i i think many of us have had those sort of situations and because of the fact that i have had literally uh, at one point i was kind of i've had like 20 something jobs since i was a teenager like just through my life and so I have had a lot of I'm new. I don't really understand what's happening here experiences. Um, so I have a level of grace and patience that I offer, even if it's a situation where I'm like, oh, not today. I just want my stuff, you know, but I don't give that energy and I just adjust my expectations. But yeah. And again, based on what he was doing, the proper thing to do to have done was either call ahead to make arrangements or at least let them give them a heads up you're coming or and or when Juanito the the manager he knew that that was the manager walking away and Juanito was like that's the guy who knows what's happening here all of the rest of us are new why not wait why not say okay well I'm gonna come back and order from y'all when he come back because he ended uh Crooks ended up going to the other location other restaurants within there it was a food court it wasn't like he couldn't do nothing else because that's exactly what he did. When he ordered, after he ordered, he then did the empanadas and then he did the grilled cheese place. He did the rolled ice after as a dessert. So why didn't you just do that? Like as a level, why put this pressure on this person who just started three days ago, who's obviously let, showing you on so many levels, they're just not well trained um, and not well aware of, you know, what's really happening there. But that's when you care about people. That's when you have a soul. Uh, what bariatric patient orders that much food? It, it, that is, I'm still trying to figure that out because he eats uh, more than I eat. <laughs> and um, I'm not a bariatric patient. And um, uh, Nicole Driver says, why this fool acting like he doesn't know what the hell comes with his order? I wrote uh, there. And I start this because Darius has always been like that. He's always ordered like that. Uh, going to Popeye's, he's going to be like, fry, you know, uh, my, my crispy chicken, fr uh, lightly fry my crispy chicken. <laughs> so like, well, you just want the regular thing, right? <laughs> like, he's always been like that. Always. He thought he was a food expert before he was even in, uh, you know, a, before social media or influencing and all of that existed. He uh, He acted like that. Uh, Kingdom Girl says, how could he possibly have time to be harassing this young man when folks are still out here waiting on pots and pans? I'm asking the same question. Now, and then all of a sudden, it's drop everything and let me get out stuff for this discount that I'm offering. And that's the other thing. I, well, I had it in that video, I think, that we just watched, where, you know, he's given 60% off sales because his markup is so high. That's how he can discount it so deeply. His markup is like two to 400%, 600% in some cases. So when he gave you a little 60% off, <laughs> like you're getting closer <laughs> to a reasonable, a reasonable markup. That's why he's able to do that. They are, whatever. That's y'all money. Uh, Donna Hammond, look at him uh, looking back and uh, snide, uh, rude dummy. Yeah. When he's, yeah, kept looking back at the camera and he's like, he tried to explain that away, saying that it was just like um, Oprah. He's like, I watch people like Oprah, and, you know, when they do interviews, when they're on out on location and, you know, she'll turn around and talk to the camera and blah, blah, blah. But she's not being condescending and repeating things that um, are belittling of the person who she's interacting with. That's the difference. Uh, ain't no way he had bar bariatric surgery. Like I said, I don't know what it was. I mean, he looked like he was in pain the next day, but he could have had a rough night with uh, those boys he paid for. I don't know. But he was just, it was hard for him, seemed like it was hard for him to walk. Um, and he had a hard time sitting down. But you, I didn't think about it, but maybe that was what it was. Maybe it wasn't a surgery. Well, maybe it felt like a surgery. Ooh, rough night. <laughs> he did say, you know, 
tops to the front of the line. Anyway, um, Donna says he blocked me a while ago. Yeah, well, <laughs> join the club. <laughs> he blocked me. He blocked me a decade ago. <laughs> Uh, doesn't stop my work here. <laughs> There's so many resources I have. Uh, he's definitely fools people because I used to watch and wonder myself, uh, why are they picking on this nice guy? Until I saw Vail, I never knew. Yeah, and that's honestly part of the reason why I continue to do the work that I do because as I say, there are still many people who follow him, but they don't follow him like that. They not they're not part of the hags, flying monkeys. They're followers. They're just regular followers who don't know what happens on the IG lives, you know, throughout the day and where he really clowns. And they're not following him on Facebook like that. They're watching the videos maybe on TikTok or something. And they think, you know, he's charismatic. You know, this unhealthy food is 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 tempting. And um, that's all they see. Delusional Dehive sums it up. So um, that is all I have for you this evening. I can't believe we just did three hours and 20 seconds. Is this all longest live? No, I think we've done three hours before, three and a half hours before. But anyway, I thank all of you for being with me and definitely click the link above the one that's pinned in the top in the comments, because that's uh, my link tree that you can find me on all social media platforms. So anywhere you can follow me, uh, even if you're not really, if you have accounts on those platforms and you don't really even use them, just still follow me on them. That helps. <laughs> so click on that and um, it'll, you know, gives you the YouTube pages, the Twitters, the TikToks, all of it. Anywhere you can find me on social media, it's there. All right. With that, have a great night. Uh, thank you. I love y'all. Thank you for your support. And until next time, peace. <laughs>